VG Trader, the only YouTube channel at the moment, which obviously means we're the original and the best, that uh, doesn't only just talk about games and collectible games and what they're worth at the moment, but we also predict what they're going to be worth in the dark recesses of the future. So join me once more on an exciting journey as I talk about four more games that are going to be worth a huge amount of money. So let's begin. Now, the first game I want to talk about today is called Akai Katana, or Akai Katana, depending which way you pronounce it. Obviously it's a Japanese game, obviously I don't speak Japanese, so obviously I've probably pronounced it wrong and someone in the comments is going to call me an idiot, which is absolutely fine. I probably am. Anyway, Akai Katana, or Akai Katana, it's a side-scrolling shoot-em-up game. Now, uh, the reason this one's going to go up in value is because there's not that many side-scrolling shoot-em-up games on the Xbox 360. There's probably about five of them, as far as I know, and I'm going to be talking about some of the other ones in other videos, so I don't want to go into them too deeply now. This game was made by a company called Cave Interactive Company, and they used to make arcade games, and then they moved into video games, mainly making games for the Xbox 360, the most amazing side-scrolling shoot-em-up games. The other games they made were Pro Gear, Death Smiles, and Death Smiles 2, and all of them came out on the Xbox 360. Now they actually make games for mobile phones, which is obviously a really big growing market. So, how much is Akai or Akai Katana? actually worth. Well, if you want to pick up an absolutely mint condition copy, um, still in the plastic, you'll probably pay about $13 at the moment in America, so it's not too expensive. And probably in the UK about £9 at the moment. But what about second hand? Well, I've seen it online today for a used copy for about $12. As for a UK copy, actually only about £3. So this one is an absolute bargain if you can find it. But what is it going to be worth in the future? Well, by 2026, I think this is going to be worth about $38 for a mint condition copy in America. And in the UK, you'll probably be able to pick it up or sell it for about £26. So you're going to make a little profit on this one. Not a massive amount, but it is worth hanging on to if you've got a copy. As for a used copy, it's probably going to go up to about $24 and about £17 in the UK. Bear in mind, if you can find it for free quid, and there are still some used copies out there going for that price, 17 quid in 10 years' time is actually quite a good profit. Now, my second one is a game for the Nintendo Wii, and it's called A Boy and His Blob. Yes. A Boy and His Blob, and it was made by WayForward Technologies, and it's actually a reimagining of an NES game that came out in 1989. And that game was called A Boy and His Blob, Trouble in Blob Blur. I'll try again. And that game was called A Boy and His Blob, Trouble in Bloblonia. Yay, I got it right! Um, that isn't easy to say after no drinks whatsoever. But what is the story of this exciting game? Well, let me explain. Bloblonia is a planet that is being threatened by an evil emperor. Hmm, I've never heard that one before. And so the Blob has to go, you know, to try and find help. And so he flies to Earth and crash lands on Earth where he's found by a boy. You can see where this is going, can't you? Yeah, they make friends, they team up, and together the boy and his Blob, oh yeah, um, they then have to save Earth from this evil bloke, uh, and also have to save the planet Bloblonia. Yeah, I know, I know. It's like an episode of EastEnders, isn't it? But only on the Nintendo Wii, with a blob that isn't Phil Mitchell. If you're in America, you'll have no idea what that means, and I do apologise, but, you know, check it out on uh, BBC America, you'll probably find it. Good old Phil. So that's the story, and in 2016, A Boy and His Blob was actually uh, reproduced for the PlayStation 4, for the Xbox One, uh, what else, for OS X, and also for Windows. So um, they brought out a lot of versions of this, and of course I'm forgetting the PS Vita version. 
Yes, which I should never forget, should I? Even though Sony sort of have forgotten about the PS Vita. Um, but on the Nintendo Wii, it is particularly good. So, how much is it worth now and how much will it be worth in the future? Right, so let's stick to the Wii copy. And you can pick up a copy of this, um, an absolutely mint condition copy, still in the cellophane, for about $40 in America at the moment, but it is going up very quickly. And in fact, in the UK, it's actually a lot more expensive. At the moment, the cheapest I've found it is actually £79. But what about pre-owned? Well, you can get a used copy for about $16, and about 15 quid uh, in the UK. So, a lot better, if I were you, I'd go for the good condition used copy, which as I've said before, I always do, rather than new. Right, in 10 years time, I think this game is actually gonna go up quite a lot. I think the American uh, copy, mint condition, is gonna cost you about $160. So, you know, buy it now, even though it's going up quite quickly. As for a UK copy, I think mint condition, it's gonna go up to at least 145 quid, because there's really not that many mint condition copies around at the moment. As for a used copy of A Boy and His Blob, obviously not so much. I think meh, about $64 in America, and about 52 quid in the UK. So you're gonna make a little profit, not a huge one, but a little one. Right, on to my next game. And I've talked about an Xbox 360 game and I've talked about a Wii game, so let's do a PS3 game. And that game is called Near, which actually is also out on the Xbox 360, but it's not worth so much, so I'm concentrating on the PS3 version, all right. Uh, yeah, uh, Near on the PS3. Now, this is a weird one, because it's actually sort of related to the Dragon Guard series. Uh, if you've played any of those on the PS2, and I think there might be one out on the PS3 as well, but I'm not sure. See, I don't know everything. Um, if you played any of those, they're quite good games, and uh, Dragon Guard 2 is actually getting very collectible on its own. But Nier is kind of related to the series. Um, you play a character again, you have to save every one. You save you know, the world because of a love for your son. You get what I mean. Um, yeah, and it's a weird game. And the reason it's a weird game is, well, I can't really put it into one style because it's kind of a bit like a Zelda style game. Uh, you can sort of, you know, uh, go exploring and it's quite beautiful. Uh, but then it's also got platformy style bits and you can also go fishing and there's also sort of bullet hell style bits so really it's a bit of a mishmash of everything and actually the fact that it's a mishmash of all these different styles styles of games mean that means that when it came out it actually got quite mixed reviews some people loved it some people hated it not many people bought it which means that now guess what it's getting collectible so um, Neo was made by a company called Cavia Software, and uh, yeah, how much is it worth? Oh, I forgot to say something. Before I go into how much it's worth, um, another thing about Neo that's absolutely amazing is the soundtrack. And in fact, it's so good, uh, the producers of Neo have actually released a couple of soundtrack albums. So if you can find those, they're also getting quite collectible. Now, let's get back to actual prices. For a mint condition copy of this, at the moment, in the US, you can pick it up for about $20. And weirdly, and this very rarely happens, weirdly, a UK copy is actually about £20 for a mint condition one. As for used, you can pick it up for about $18 in America and about £15 in the UK. And that is, as I've said, for a PS3 copy. Now, if you're collecting for the Xbox 360, which I don't do as much, um, a lot cheaper. You can probably pick it up used for about four quid. I just thought I'd add that as a footnote just to show you the differences in price on different formats. And as I've said before, the reason for this is because PlayStation games were on Blu-ray and Xbox 360 games weren't on Blu-ray and the Xbox 360 discs tend to scratch really easily. So they tend not to be worth as much money even though the game is pretty much exactly the same. So, how much is Nier on the PS3 gonna be worth in 10 years time? Well, I think in America, a mint condition copy is gonna hit the $100 mark. I should have a siren that goes off when it's exactly $100. Maybe I'll do that, I'll say it again and then you can you know, see if it works. 
Uh, yeah, so a mint condition copy of Nier on the PS3 is going to hit, I reckon, about a hundred dollars. Yeah, it didn't work, I won't do that again. And uh, yeah, in, in the UK, probably about 90 quid. So, you know, pretty good profit if you can get hold of a mint condition copy. But what about used? Well, in America, I think it's going to go up to about $73. And in the UK, probably about 65 quid. So again, you know, yeah, not a bad little profit. Now, on to my final game today. And uh, today, I really did leave the best till last. So, what is it? Well, it's called Saturday Morning RPG. That's Saturday Morning RPG. Now, this is a game that brings a whole new meaning to the word limited edition. It originally came out for sort of PC. It came out on, um, you know, Apple's operating system. And it also came out uh, on Steam Network. But then it was released by a company called Limited Edition Games. And they released it on the PlayStation Vita and the PS4. And this is seriously limited edition. Now, I'm going to focus on the PlayStation 4 version, but I just want to mention one thing. It also came out on the PS Vita. And the PS Vita was the one with more copies. And for the PS Vita, there were only 2,500 copies. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, 2,500, that's loads of copies. That's across the entire world. Yeah, I know. I know. Came out in America, 2,500 copies for the PS Vita. Not a lot for the entire world when you think that, you know, some of these AAA titles, you're talking, you know, two, three million copies come out. So this is a tiny, tiny amount, and it sold out in minutes for the PS Vita. But how many copies came out for the PS4 of Saturday Morning RPG? Well, let me tell you. 1,980. I know. 1980 that is absolutely nothing and before you ask do i have a copy no i don't i wish i did i'm trying to get hold of a copy i've put in a few bids on ebay have i had any luck no and uh you know i'm doing my best to get a copy because this one is gonna go not even through the roof not not you know not even into space this one is gonna be massively expensive but before I go a little bit more, you know, into prices, what is this game all about? Well, it's sort of steeped in 1980s sort of nostalgia. If you know anything about 1980s style cartoons and Transformers and all that sort of stuff, you'll probably absolutely love it because it is a role play game and you play a character called Marty. Yes, Marty. Hmm, Marty, where have I heard that name? Back to the Future! But it isn't obviously Marty from Back to the Future. But I think it does take some of its ideas from family style films and Saturday morning shows and things like that. Now, what happens to Marty? Well, Marty gets a magical book which helps him gain power over different things. And he uses this book in order to save the world from the evil Commander Hood. Yes, once again, you're saving the world from some evil bloke. Uh, but this time in a 1980s style pastiche type way, playing a character called Marty who's not remotely related to Marty McFly from Back to the Future. Okay, let's continue. Now, once again, this one has an absolutely amazing soundtrack that was actually produced by a man called Vince DeCola. You may have heard of him before. He actually did the soundtrack for Rocky IV and Transformers the movie. I know! He's a pretty big deal. And that is another reason why this game is starting to get expensive, apart from the fact there's hardly any copies on the entire blooming planet. So, how much is it worth? Well, Limited Edition Games actually only released this on their website. And as I've said, it sold out in absolutely minutes. The trouble is, it sold out to people who were then gonna sell it instantly on eBay. Um, so you can actually get a mint condition copy of this at the moment. And I say at the moment, because obviously they're not gonna be around for very long. Um, before proper collectors all snap them up. And you can get a mint condition copy in America for about $60 at the moment, which is beyond amazing. As for a UK mint condition copy, well, it was only released in America, but you can pick it up for about £45. So, you know, eh, not too bad really 
at the moment. As for a copy that's been taken out of its cellophane or a used copy, you can pick it up at the moment for about $50 or about £35. OK, so how much is Saturday Morning RPG going to be worth in 10 years' time? If you're eating at the moment, please stop eating because you're probably going to throw up in your own mouth from shock. Now, I believe that a mint condition copy of Saturday Morning RPG is going to be worth, in 10 years' time, about $300. Wow! And, you know, obviously, UK money, probably about 250 quid. So this one is going to be massively expensive. As for a used copy, probably still $200 and about, ooh, about 150 quid. Yeah. I know. Ridiculous! Yeah, see if you can get a copy. Anyway, obviously if you do get a copy, let me know in the comments. And also, why not let me know your address? And also, why not let me know when you're not going to be in your house? Anyway, that's it for today for VG Trader. Join me again soon for more Which video games will make you rich? And don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to subscribe. Mm. Cheers. Bye! Bye.